Hey all, I'm Rat. This is another episode of Rats in the Kitchen. Now a lot of people refer to magnet fishing as a budget free version of uh, metal detecting. And that's true, it's much lower on the budget. You talk about 30 to 50 dollars for a magnet as opposed to 300 dollars or so for a metal detector. But what if we get even lower than that? That's where gravel hooking comes in. And we're talking all about grapple hooking on a shoestring, which you could almost literally do if you want to tie a whole bunch of shoestrings together. But today what I did was I went down to the dollar store, got this little cultivator for a buck, and uh, got some twine. Now I wouldn't trust a 50 dollar magnet to this, but a one dollar cultivator, sure, why not? First thing I do with the cultivator, uh, we're gonna move that, because if you throw that in, this gets hooked on something, we're gonna lose it. Then, I'm gonna try to bend these up a little bit, which I can do with my bare hands. Bend that side down, see if it does any good. Now we got a little bit more of a hook look to it. And maybe pull those guys out to the side a little too. So there we go. And then we're going to tie the twine to it. And I'm going to do that part off camera because I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, later on, if this works out a bit, I'll probably just drill a hole through it, but for right now I'm out in the field, so we're just going to give it a go. And here we are actually magnet fishing. Now to be honest with you, I'm doing this voiceover maybe a month after the video. This all got backburnered a few times. So I, if I remember correctly, and I might not, uh, the thing I remember most about this is that the grapple hook itself was a great idea. The cultivator, the Dollster cultivator, was great. You needed a couple modifications, uh, which we'll get to in a little while. The part about this idea that was absolutely horrible was the twine, which was pretty much guaranteeing instant, uh, instant rope burn. So yeah, here's the first modification. I noticed that the twine was staying near the base of the cultivator slash grappling hook. So I tried to make a couple of bends and this being some fairly flexible metal it was easy to make those bends. And then to try to try the, the twine around the top and then send it back down. I think it was trying to create like a loop in the metal. But my thought process here, which occasionally leaves a lot to be desired, was that I could just bend the metal and the twine would stay there and not sink down or anything, but realistically duct tape which they also sell in the dollar store where I bought the cultivator. Yeah, a variety of duct tapes too, not just plain old silver or plain old black, but that really cool stuff with like the 1890s mustaches. You could have a grapple hook with mustache duct tape. It's the same type of duct tape I used to use to hold the hood of my car down. But back to the, what we're actually doing here, uh, there's a bike that you can see, and the hook, this dollar store grappling hook, cultivator hook, is able to get it, 
Uh, give or take the twine, not wanting to stay in position. So, I'm not going to blame the twine for that particular aspect. The, the twine was a horrible idea because of the rope burn, mostly. But in all fairness to the twine, any, um, any rope would have slipped in that position, I think. There we are, we've got it hooked. And we're bringing it off to the side. And I'm killing my hands. If you've ever seen any of those movies where somebody tries to hold the sword, that's basically what your, I mean, hold the sword by the blade, obviously. That's obviously where your hands are going to look like after trying to pull up a heavy object with twine. So making a few more modifications, try to get the metal formed into some sort of loop to keep the rope in place, twine in place. Trying to use the fence as leverage to pull it up. And that did not prevent uh, my hands from hurting. So I'm pulling it up, trying to get it to drain a little bit. Pulling the bike off to the side. Killing my hands. It's it kills both hands equally. Really, the twine is not uh, twine rope kill is is very ambidextrous. So what I did was I grabbed my bag, grabbed all my stuff out of the way. It was over there, one there, and I used this sock, which I also use as a lens protector for the GoPro when it's in transport. Unfortunately, I only had the one GoPro. Uh, it's not a, even a real GoPro, it's the knockoff version. But because there's only one of them, I only had the one lens cover, so only one hand got protected. As you can see there, I went with the left. They also sell gloves in dollar stores. So again, if you got to go this ultra cheap butt route, I, I, I'd say spend the whole four or five bucks. Get yourself the whole kit. You know, get yourself the, the grapple hook, the twine, or better yet, the clothesline. Clothesline you can probably also get for a buck. So let's say, <coughs> excuse me, let's say you get a grapple hook, some clothesline, uh, a pair of gloves and some duct tape. For four bucks, you get a pretty good setup. But I said to hold it. Went home, got my magnet and my special water dishwashing gloves. And some military rope. And just went down there and just started getting the bikes, which this was a couple of days later, I think. It might have been the next day. So I went back and got the bikes with the magnet. So grappling hook versus magnet. The, ma the grappling hook, a decent grapple hook, will get in there easily and pull things up more easily but a magnet is much better for magnet fishing so pulling it up cleaning it up that's another thing you never have to do with the grapple hook very rarely okay you might have to clean up like a plastic bag or something or a bit of cloth with a grappling hook uh, but not a whole lot you don't have to get all the the schmutz off like you do with the magnet but there we go and I think I pulled I finally hit the 
the gear center. And we got the bike. There's our first bike that we got that day. And give it a look carefully. You can still see the grappling hook on there somewhere. Or at least the twine. Trying to get the rope unsnagged. So we got that first bike. And we got a random piece of metal, I think. I think this is where we grab the random metal. Oh no, wait, this is. I was. Yeah, this is where we almost get the hose. There's that hose type thing, the plastic tube. And what we're actually pulling up is the obligatory razor scooter. And we lost it because it was kind of connected to this plastic tube. Not sure if it was PVC or something else like that. But instead we, we settle for this little random metal rod. Put that with the bike. Go back down. Try to get the Razor scooter. Boom, that was an easy grab. And just grab it by the crotch, Trump style, as we decided, as we called it in another episode. Yeah, I think we're just going to grab one more bike and call it a day. Bike came out pretty quick. So, just to review, uh, Doll Store Cultivator makes a good grappling hook. I'll go back to trying that idea. Twine makes a horrible rope. Magnets are the preferred tool for magnet fishing. Again, thank you for watching Rats in the Kitchen. I'm Rat, and there'll be another episode coming up real soon after this. I promise you. Thank you for watching. There's the hook.